Hello everyone. Welcome to day September of Lead Code Challenge and today's question is basic calculator. In this question, we are given a string which is a mathematical expression containing digits plus sign, negative sign and opening round brackets and closing round brackets. Also, there could be possibility that there, that there is space, we can safely ignore it. So these are the characters that can be part of our input string. We need to evaluate this complete expression and return the result whatever will be formed after the evaluation. The question seems pretty straightforward in understanding. So without much ado, let's try and look at the presentation that I have created for this and let's get started with the PTPT. Basic calculator, lead code 224. It's a hard question on lead code, but somewhat I feel it's somewhere between medium to hard category. Also, we have done basic calculator 2 in the past, uh, which is on the similar lines as this question. So once you are done with this, try it as an opportunity to revise that question. Again, I'm attaching the link to the video in the description below. So please have a look at it and do practice. So let's get started with this solution now. Uh, I have taken a slightly different example so that you get a good hold of the concept. Uh, there is a strong hint that is specified in the question. Uh, first of all, it says basic calculator. So whenever you see the word calculator, remember that it will be solved using stacks. No matter, no matter what, you have to apply stacks in it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, so there was another constraint that was specified in the question that the digits that are there in the S character, S string happens to be a positive sign, a negative sign, an opening or closing bracket or a space. Now we know we don't need to take care of multiplication or division cases. Then why do we actually need a stack? So let's try to take few examples and understand what is the need to have stacks in the approach. Uh, here, uh, the input string that is given to us is one plus two plus bracket three minus 78. Also from the board mass rules, we know that plus and negative happens to be on the same priority. So if you are doing some operation like minus three plus 10 or plus 10 minus three, uh, it really doesn't matter. You can do anything first. So you want to perform minus three, then uh, add 10 to it, or you want to do plus 10, then subtract three from it. It results in the same answer, which is seven. So addition and subtraction holds the same ground when it comes to performing arithmetic operations. Now let's evaluate the first expression. So we have one, then we have a plus sign, then we have two. So one plus two turns out to be three and three becomes our result so far. Then we have another plus sign. Then we have a bracket followed by a three. So that means the bracket needs to be evaluated first and three minus 78 turns out to be 75. Since the sign here was a plus sign, that means it will not affect anything and the answer would be minus 72 which is correct. Let's talk about the second case. Here the string is one plus two minus then a bracket, then three minus 78. The difference is we have a negative sign here. So this will be evaluated to three. Then we have a negative sign. And since there is a negative sign here, that means whatever the result you get out of these bracket area should be negated and then three should be added to it. So what is the result that we get out of this this bracket area? Three minus 78 is minus 75. Minus 75 will be negated again and it will result to plus 75. 75 plus three is 78. So how do you see the difference in these two expressions? Uh, had there been a plus sign, uh, the brackets really doesn't make any difference to the answer. However, when you see a negative sign, we need to keep track of whatever sum we have calculated so far. Also, we need to evaluate the inner expression first, then negate it and add these two, subtract these two up because there is a negative sign over here. So this is the complete takeaway from these two examples. What we will be doing, we will be 
keeping track of the answer variable that we have calculated so far and as soon as we see a negative sign and there is a bracket following it we will evaluate this part of the expression first once this expression is evaluated uh, we will negate it using this negative sign and add it to the previous result that we have calculated so far and where will we store uh, these previous results that we have calculated so far we will store it in a form of stack so without much ado let's try and look at the solution the core algorithm now i have taken a slightly different examples but it's also on similar lines so the expression is something like this 1 2 minus 2 minus opening bracket 3 minus 78 and i have taken three variables here uh, the first one is the sign variable that holds what the current sign for current digit is the next one holds what is the current number under evaluation the third one is my answer variable that will store my answer and this is a stack that i have created now and uh, it is of generic type integer i'll tell you why i'm taking a single stack and of generic type integer how would we keep track of the sign so let's get started uh, the default value of sign is positive and is represented by one uh, so the first index that we have is zero and uh, the value at that index is one so as soon as you see a digit you keep on moving ahead in the input string till the time there is a non-digit character so that you can form a variable or a number so you keep on moving your eye pointer ahead till the time you don't see a non-digit character so how the number will be formed the number will be formed as 10 uh, plus 2 which will be 12 so let me just update this number to 12 and as soon as you see that uh, the number has been successfully formed what you are going to do you'll add it to your answer using the sign expression so what sign was it it was a plus sign and what you can uh, do to handle this plus sign you can multiply 1 with the current number that you have calculated and add it to your answer so 12 into 1 is 12 and it gets added to the answer so the answer variable is holding 12 right now let's move ahead in, in the iteration the current character into consideration is minus so we'll update this to minus so this gets updated to minus and how will this be represented this will be represented by minus 1 also once you have added you can update this to 0 for the next iteration and the answer variable will keep on holding 12 so far let's move ahead in the iteration and now we have a character which is digit and it happens to be 2 so we'll keep on moving ahead till the time we don't see a non-digit character and the number will become equal to 2 so this becomes equal to 2 let's move ahead in the iteration uh, this will break at fourth index and here you see a negative sign so as soon as you see a negative sign uh, what you're going to do whatever the previous sign value that was stored in your sign variable uh, you will multiply the sign into the current number and add it to your answer so what sign was it it was a negative sign negative sign is represented by minus one so 2 into minus 1 happens to be minus 2 and you will add it to your answer so this gives us 10 so let's update the answer to 10 also it really doesn't mean let's continue the iteration and here we have the character as minus so we'll update the sign uh, to minus again and it will be represented by minus 1 let's continue the process also this will be updated to zero once you have added to your answer so this gets updated to zero by default let's continue the process and here what do you see you see an opening bracket so now comes the core concept of using stack we need to keep track of whatever answer we have calculated so far because we want to evaluate the inner expression first so where can we store this information we will be dumping this information onto the stack so this the answer variable gets added to the stack so we add 10 to the stack also we add the sign variable for further processing to happen in the later part of the evaluation 
so what sign is getting held right now it is negative sign so we'll add negative sign and it is represented by minus one so these two gets added onto the stack i'll tell you where it will be used and let's just update this to default plus and one and here the answer will be updated again to zero for the evaluation of the inner part of the bracket section let's continue the process the first variable uh, the first number that we see is three uh, since it is three the default sign will work and you will continue the iteration till the time we don't see a non-digit uh, number uh, so uh, current variable the current number will be updated to three and then you see a negative sign as soon as you see a negative sign you will evaluate this number what number was it so it's 3 into 1 it, the answer variable gets updated by 3 into 1 which is 3 also since it was a negative sign here so we'll update the sign to minus and it's represented as minus 1 for the next iteration to happen next we have uh, 7 at 8th index and uh, at 9th index we have 78 and at 10th index we have the opening bracket uh, apologies I just clubbed it together here but I hope you understand uh, we will evaluate till the time we don't see a non uh, digit character and uh, here the current number that will be formed would be 78 so you got 78 and the next character in iteration is a opening bracket so what you're gonna do uh, you will first of all evaluate this expression and by evaluating this expression how will you do that 78 will be multiplied by the sign variable and it will be added to your answer so 3 minus uh, 3 mi plus 3 plus minus 1 into 78 3 plus minus 1 into 78 and this gives me minus 75 so the answer variable gets updated by minus 75 and the next character that we see is a closing bracket and as soon as you see a closing bracket you need to pop out elements from the stack and form your answer so how will you do that uh, we'll pull out the sign variable that was stored since it's a negative sign we'll multiply it with the answer variable so minus 75 into minus 1 turns out to be plus 75 and again we'll pull out another variable out of the stack that stores the result that we have calculated so far and add it to our answer and this gets added to the answer and the answer becomes 85 which was expected so there were a couple of things that I have done while evaluating this expression uh, you will be crystal clear in the coding section so as to summarize the core concept and I'll exactly do the same steps and I have told here so without much ado let's move on to the coding section I have created few variables here the first one is the length that stores the length of the input string the second one is a sign and the default value is initialized to 1 the answer variable is initialized to 0 and the current number into consideration is initialized to again a 0 I have created a stack so as to keep track of the elements or and the sign variable that has been dumped so far onto the stack the first case is as soon as you see a digit will try and form the complete number till the time you don't see a non digit character so as till the time uh, all the digits are coming up in the input string you are forming the current number and as soon as you have formed the current number uh, you simply multiply it with the sign variable and add it to your answer so you multiplied the sign variable into your with your current number and added it to your answer for the next iteration you reset it to a zero also I should reset the sign variable to plus let's look at the next condition here I see a positive sign and as soon as you see a positive sign you simply update 
द साइन वेरिएबल टू प्लस और वन नेक्स्ट यू सी अ नेगेटिव साइन एज सुन एज यू सी अ नेगेटिव साइन यू अपडेट योर साइन वेरिएबल टू माइनस वन माइनस वन रिप्रेजेंट्स साइन नेगेटिव साइन एंड नाउ कम्स इंटरेस्टिंग केस एज सुन एज यू सी एन ओपनिंग ब्रैकेट यू पुश ऑन पुश द आंसर वेरिएबल द रिजल्ट दैट यू हैव कैलकुलेटेड सो फार ऑन टू द स्टार्ट as we added 10 onto the stack in the example and you also add the sign variable onto the stack uh, so as to keep track of what the last sign into consideration was you reset these variables for the next iteration to happen for uh, re revalu for evaluation of the part of the string that is within the brackets and the last statements which is equally interesting as soon as you see and closing bracket you pull out the previous sign that is to be multiplied with your current evaluated expression so this was the previous sign that is held at the top of the stack you multiply it with your answer variable and again you pull out another number from the stack which was the previous answer and you add these two up in the end you simply return the answer let's try this up accepted and the time complexity is pretty straightforward it's order of n where n signifies the length of the input string this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you liked it please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye